Greetings, Pookie fans! Michael here, and a little while ago, I had the silly idea to make a video where I ranked every single fish Pokemon based on how much I liked them. I was expecting the video to do okay at best, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that a lot of you really liked the video, so much so that you wanted to see more. So I figured the next logical category of Pokemon to rank after fish Pokemon was bird Pokemon. Now before we get started, I do need to define what I mean by bird Pokemon, because the games are often inconsistent. For the purposes of this video, a bird Pokemon is a Pokemon based heavily on a real life bird. A bird is defined as a warm-blooded, egg-laying vertebrate distinguished by the possession of feathers, wings, and a beak, and typically by being able to fly. We are going to ignore the egg-laying part because all Pokemon can lay eggs, so that doesn't help us here. However, the games oftentimes use the term bird Pokemon to refer to just flying-type Pokemon in general, and in my opinion that should not be the case and is definitely not the case for this video. For example, Golduck is a bird Pokemon, despite it not being a flying type, because it's based on a duck, which is a bird. Meanwhile, Tropius is a flying type Pokemon, but is not a bird Pokemon, because it is very clearly not a bird, it is a long neck dinosaur. Someone needs to get that message through to all those bird keepers in Emerald that are somehow keeping Tropius. Tropii. Tropiuses? Also, someone tell Dane that he needs to change his trainer class because what the heck is he doing with that team composition? None of those are birds. I will be ranking the 66 different bird Pokemon based entirely on my own opinion toward them, and I will be including the brand new Gen 8 bird Pokemon in this list. Before I get started though, there are a couple Pokemon I need to go over because you might be expecting to see them in this ranking, but won't. The first is the Porygon Evolutionary Line. They are based on computer code and also origami, and therefore are shaped like birds. I wasn't sure if they should count as birds, so I pulled the community, and you all were heavily in favor of not counting them as birds, so they will not be included here. The next was Ludicolo. Now, while I know its primary design inspiration is the Kappa plus a pineapple, the origin section of its Bulbapedia article says that it may be based on a duck, which made me unsure. I ran another poll, and you guys all responded with a resounding no, it is not a bird Pokemon, so Ludicolo's gonna sit this one out. So I think that about covers all the intro stuff, so don't forget to leave a like on the video, and let's dive into my ranking of every single bird Pokemon. Number 66 is Prinplup. I have always disliked Prinplup. I think it is a severely failed attempt at being cute when it ends up just being straight up ugly. It's a massive letdown from the very adorable Piplup. Number 65 is Dartrix. I will never understand why they thought it was a good idea to design a Pokemon based on awkward teens. No one wants to be reminded of their awkward stage teenage haircut. Just no, just put that away. Number 64 is Empoleon. I've gotten some flack for it over the years, but I have never liked Empoleon. While I don't think it's as ugly as Prinplup, I still find it very ugly. Its tiny head on its wide waist looks goofy, and I don't like the strange tuxedo tassels. I know a lot of people really like Empoleon, but I simply never will. Number 63 is Tornadus Therian form. Now, while regular Tornadus is definitely not a bird, Tornadus Therian most certainly is. It's got the body of a bird, and Tornadus' former mustache is converted into a structure that is close enough to a beak for it to count here. However, I still don't like it because the head still looks too much like the ugly, goofy head of regular Tornadus. If its body had a head more like a normal bird and its chest area was made a bit less... ...suggestive. I think it could have been a much better Pokemon. Number 62 is Delibird. Delibird is just plain useless. It is a Pokemon that exists for the sole purpose of Christmas-themed things, and that's it. It's hopelessly weak, and it's definitely not cute enough to make up for all of its shortcomings. Number 61 is Combuskin. It is a goofy looking chicken. While Torchic is cute and Blaziken is badass, Combuskin looks like an awkward derp with a questionable body shape. Number 60 is Volibi. Volibi is just ugly. Like I mentioned with Empoleon, a tiny head on a big body rarely looks good, and that is certainly the case for Volibi. Additionally, it's based on a bird that is pretty ugly to begin with, so that doesn't help much. Number 59 is Storavia. 
Staravia is yet another example of the middle evolution not having the cuteness of its pre-evolution, yet not having the badassness of its final evolution. And as a result, looking goofy. Like, come on, dude, what are you doing with that hairstyle? It's awful. Number 58 is Chadot. Chadot is in a similar situation to Delibird. It's got a gimmick, but does nothing else. I find it extremely forgettable and would not be bothered if it ceased to exist. Number 57 is Zapdos. I think it is the worst member of the legendary birds because it looks the least like a bird. It looks like pieces of yellow and black construction paper that a preschooler cut up then glued together before sticking on a toothpick beak as the finishing touch. It doesn't look imposing or majestic like the other two birds. It just looks ridiculous. Number 56 is Tranquil. The Tranquil evolutionary line is definitely one of the weaker regional bird lines, with Tranquil being the worst member in my opinion. It's a bird with weird curly hair. It's very forgettable. Number 55 is Trumbeak. Trumbeak is yet another bad regional bird middle stage. It just looks like Pick-a-Peck really let itself go. I don't like it. Number 54 is Unpheasant. As I just mentioned, this evolutionary line is one of the least liked regional bird lines. Unpheasant's dramatic gender differences are cool, but other than that, it's very bland and pretty weak. I just don't care about it and would never use it if better options were available. Number 53 is Wingull. For many years, I really liked Wingull because I associate it so heavily with Hoenn, my first ever region. However, my experience with it in the wild and sun and moon definitely made me like it less. It is fast, so it is difficult to run from, and it loves to use supersonic. Those things on their own wouldn't be that big of a deal, except that Wingull is virtually everywhere in the Alola region. Because it annoyed me so much on so many different occasions, I just don't like it as much anymore. Number 52 is Arkin, which was actually another Pokemon I wasn't sure about whether to include on this list or not. It is based on the Archaeopteryx, a prehistoric creature known to be the ancestor of all birds, but not a bird itself. Arkin's Pokedex entries also contradict themselves. There are several that say it is the ancestor of all bird Pokemon, implying that it's not one, but then there's one that says this ancient bird Pokemon, which implies that it is one. I decided to do what I did for the other Pokemon and ran a poll for all of you guys. The resounding majority said that Arkin and Archeops should be counted as bird Pokemon, so it's here on the list. As for my thoughts on it, I am not super into Arkin specifically. I love the design concept, but this Pokemon just simply isn't very cute. Number 51 is Farfetch'd. Poor Farfetch'd, a Pokemon famous for its blandness and uselessness. I don't hate it, but there's virtually no way for me to ever like it. Number 50 is Swablu. Swablu is a fine Pokemon. It was actually my first ever shiny in Pokemon Go, but I don't find it cute enough to put it higher on this list. Number 49 is Spearow. Spearow to me will always just be Discount Pidgey. Like, it's all right, but I always think of it as the lesser early Kanto bird. Number 48 is Doduo. Doduo is fine. I don't have many thoughts on it, to be honest. It's a two-headed bird, whatever. Number 47 is Swana. I think Swana's design is just a tad off. Like, it looks fine, but I feel like it could have been tweaked to look just a bit better. I can't really put my finger on what exactly could be tweaked though, so I guess I really don't have a right to say anything. Number 46 is P-Dove. P-Dove is the last member of its evolutionary line on this list because it is the most aesthetically pleasing of the three. It's still a bland, weak regional bird, but it's kind of cute. Number 45 is Altaria. I'm pretty much totally neutral to Altaria. I like the design choice of having a bird partially made of clouds, but it doesn't really pop out to me. Also, I never really fully understood why it's a dragon. Number 44 is Murkrow. Murkrow is a fine Pokemon that I am mostly neutral to, but it would have been higher on this list if I had found a shiny Murkrow in Pokemon Go by now. I cannot believe that I have not. I have clicked on so many of these damn birds. Number 43 is Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is a dramatic improvement over Volibi, but it's still held back by being based on a bird that is ugly to begin with. I don't think Mandibuzz is ugly, but I still don't think it's cool. Number 42 is Cresselia, and if you're not sure why Cresselia is here, that is because it is heavily based on a swan. A fancy psychic laser swan, but still a swan. Or maybe a duck. While I've never really liked Cresselia, I've never really disliked it. For a while, I just thought it was a fine, somewhat forgettable legendary. 
However, it's higher up on this list than I probably would have otherwise placed it because I have a good memory of finding a shiny one in a mere 19 resets. That was dope. Number 41 is Zatu. It's fine. I don't have much to say about it. Number 40 is Talo. It is also fine. It's kind of cute, but not super cute, but hey, it's from Hoenn and I have a bias towards those Pokemon. Number 39 is Hoot Hoot. I went to Rice University, whose mascot is the owls, so I kind of like owls, other than Dartrix. Hoot Hoot is a cute owl, so I like it a bit. Number 38 is Pelipper. A lot of people trash on Pelipper for looking like a toilet, which is admittedly fair but my history of using it several times in Hoenn playthroughs and the fact that my favorite Pokemon Draft League team, aside from my own, is my good friend Pokemon 7's team, the New Orleans Pelippers, makes me like it a bit. Number 37 is Toucanon. Toucanon is cool and has a cool name, but I think it looks too much just like a regular Toucan that's angry. Number 36 is Cramorant. Since I have yet to play a game with Cramorant in it, I haven't had the chance to develop stronger feelings toward it, either in the negative or positive direction. Therefore, as of now, I am neutral toward it, but appreciative of its facial expressions. Number 35 is Dodrio. I think Dodrio is kind of cool. I think of it as a Pokemon used by strong trainers, like Gary in the anime or Red in Pokemon Origins. Number 34 is Pidgey. Pidgey is a classic Pokemon. It is objectively a pretty bland bird, but because of the history behind it, I find it impossible to dislike. Number 33 is Natu. I have always thought Natu to be pretty cute, but over the past year, I've thought about it more than in any previous year. That is because around a year ago, I lost a shiny Natu in Pokemon Go because AR Plus crashed while I was trying to catch it. It was my first and only shiny fail in Pokemon Go as of now. I have yet to find another one, so Natu is my white whale of shinies right now. When I eventually reclaim it, it will be a very exciting day. Number 32 is Swellow. Swellow is the regional bird of the Hoenn region, and as I mentioned many times, if the Pokemon is from Hoenn, I am more likely to like it. It's a very solid bird. Number 31 is Rufflet. Rufflet is pretty cute, and also I found a shiny one, so that was dope. Number 30 is Ducklet. Ducklet is a cute derp, and not a bad derp. I like it. Number 29 is Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto, like Pidgey, is a classic, made even more iconic by being on Ash's team for so long. Plus, the hair makes it more unique. I like it. Number 28 is Golduck. I've used Golduck in many playthroughs in which it performed pretty well. It's grown on me as a result. Number 27 is Fletchender. Finally, a middle evolution that is good. Fletchender doesn't blow me away, but it is a very solid Pokemon. Number 26 is Fearow. If not for my personal experiences with Fearow, it would probably be a bit lower on this list. However, since I've used it many times with success in playthrough teams, and it was my first ever shiny, ever, I really like Fearow. Number 25 is Honchcrow. Honchcrow is a massive upgrade to Murkrow, and I want to try out using one on my team someday. That high physical attack seems like it'd be really fun to use. Number 24 is Articuno. It is a very well-designed, pretty Pokemon. I don't love it, but I do think it's good. Number 23 is Pikapek. Pikapek is very cute, and the pecking motions it does really add to that. Number 22 is Skarmory. It is an armored metal bird Pokemon. That's pretty dope. Number 21 is Psyduck. It is impossible to dislike Psyduck. It's hilarious, and the Psyduck news report from Pokemon Channel is hands down the greatest news broadcast of all time. Number 20 is Noctowl. As I mentioned earlier, I like owls, and Noctowl is a very cool owl. Number 19 is Torchic. Torchic is adorable. I don't have much else to add to that. Number 18 is Surfetched. I love Surfetched simply for existing. Farfetch'd has needed an evolution for many, many years, and I love that they're finally giving it one. Plus, its smug facial expression is fantastic. Number 17 is Fletchling. It is so cute. Its big head and round eyes are just adorable. Number 16 is Starly. Honestly, Starly and Fletchling could have been switched because I find them to be on very equal footing in regards to adorableness. Number 15 is Pidgeot. I know I said that Pidgey and Pidgeotto are classics, but Pidgeot is the most famous of them all. Those luscious locks are iconic and it simply looks cool. Also, I like its Mega Evolution, which is not something I can say for many Pokemon. Number 14 is Piplup. Piplup is extremely cute and also my fiance Jubilee's favorite Pokemon. I'd probably like it more if its evolutions weren't such disasters, but Piplup itself is very solid. 
Number 13 is Yaveltal. Oh, you, you think I pronounced that incorrectly? <laughs> well, you must be new here. Here on this channel, we pronounce it Yaveltal because that is how the creature itself says it should be pronounced. My name! Is Yaveltal! As for my thoughts on it, I like Yaveltal not only because it looks cool, but because that Pokemon Talk episode became so iconic in my community. Number 12 is Moltres. Moltres is the best of the three legendary birds. The flames engulfing it looks so awesome, and I'm also on Team Valor in Pokemon Go. I gotta love Moltres. Number 11 is Corviknight. Remember how I said that Skarmory being a metal armored bird was cool? Well, Corviknight is that, but better. It's just so intimidating and imposing, and there's a very good chance I'll use one on my team in Sword and Shield. Number 10 is Ho-Oh. The main reason I like Ho-Oh so much is that its shiny is one of my favorites of all of them. Also, it's just a flat out majestic Pokemon, which is perfect for a legendary. Number nine is Braviary. Braviary is a badass kick butt eagle that takes no prisoners. How could you not like this dope creature that looks like it could just wreck anything? Also, it's shiny is perfect. Number eight is Lugia, and yes, I have decided that Lugia should be counted as a bird Pokemon. I was unsure for a bit because the origins section of its Bulbapedia article lists plesiosaurs, dragons, gray herons, beluga whales, and a freaking stegosaurus as potential design inspirations. It is certainly not obvious what the heck this thing is supposed to be, but I decided to count it as a bird Pokemon for one big reason. It is the trio master of the legendary birds. Now, while there are definitely instances of trio masters not being the same species as the rest of the trio, like Ho-Oh being the trio master over the legendary beasts, Lugia can fly just like the rest of the legendary birds. So, you know, I think that's close enough. As for my thoughts on it, I love Lugia. It's such an awesome and fearsome creature. It just exudes this aura of being an incredible force of nature, which I absolutely love. Also, Shadow Lugia from Pokemon XD is amazing. Number seven is Archeops. Archeops is my favorite fossil Pokemon. It looks a lot like a dinosaur, which I love, and it's probably the most unique bird Pokemon out there, being the first one. I used one on my team for my first playthrough in the Unova region, and while Defeatus definitely sucks, most of the time, mine stayed healthy, so I was able to decimate a lot of opponents with my Archeops. Number six is Staraptor. Staraptor was the first regional bird I ever used on a playthrough team, and I was spoiled. It hits like a truck, gets great coverage with close combat, and of course looks extremely cool. Staraptor is simply an incredible Pokemon. Number five is Halucha. This Pokemon is so fun. I love that it's the first fighting flying type, and achieving that by creating a Hawk Luchador is so unique and fun. I love the air of performance it puts on during combat too. It's just so great when a Pokemon is able to simultaneously be unique, badass, and hilarious. I used one named Nacho on my Ultra Sun team and a Pokemon that I already liked became one of my all time favorites. Number four is Decidueye. Decidueye is just too cool. A hooded archer that's an owl, which as I've already said many times is an animal that I really like, is of course going to be a Pokemon that I can't help but love. It's my favorite Alola starter by a large margin. Number three is Rowlet. This ball of owl adorableness is a gift to the world. It's cute, round, and the face of a meme movement. It is wonderful. Number two is Blaziken. Blaziken is just plain awesome. It's a perfect example of a strong, crush you partner Pokemon. I thought it was awesome since it first showed up in the anime when I was a kid, and honestly, if I hadn't chosen Trico as my first starter in Ruby all those years ago, Blaziken might have become my favorite Pokemon of all time. And finally, number one is Talonflame. Talonflame is simply incredible. It is a peregrine falcon, a super cool bird I've known about since I was watching Zaboomafu as a little kid, so by default, it's awesome. But in addition to that, it has fire powers. The fastest traveling animal in the world now sets things ablaze. That is amazing. But what catapulted Talonflame from being a pretty dope Pokemon to one of my all time favorite Pokemon in my top 10 was my usage of it in Gen 6. I had one on my team in my first playthrough of Kalos. I used several for a really long time to fly around and hatch eggs 
and I wrecked with it in the Gen 6 competitive scene. Galewing's Brave Bird was just amazing. I had a Talonflame on the team that I used to get 24th out of 255 people in my first and only VGC tournament event, so that was really cool. And also I used a Talonflame to help me get a 50 streak in the Battle Mason doubles in my X version. Those are two of my proudest accomplishments in Pokemon, and Talonflame helped me get there. So of course, I'm really gonna like this awesome Pokemon. So there we have it, that was my ranking for every single bird Pokemon. Thank you so much for watching, and if you wanna see some more of these ranking every blank Pokemon formats, let me know down in the comments below what other categories you would like to see. In the meantime though, if you enjoyed this video and wanna see some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, give hands. Gotta catch them all.